Okay, let's go ahead and move on with the uh, firmware update here, which is the first thing that you should do when you purchase a Vortex fiberless system. Now, is it really required? No, it's not required, but it, it is highly recommended. And the reason being is Angelos, the owner of Spartan, is constantly looking forward to um, coming up with ideas and improving things, whether it is improving the, flying be the flight behavior or coming up with a new feature or whatever it is, there's firmware um, releases, um, pretty common actually, new firmware releases being published to the website. So when you buy a Vortex unit, um, that unit might be sitting in the shelf, on the shelf of a hobby shop for a few weeks or even for a couple of months. Well, it might not have the latest firmware. So always go ahead and update the firmware before you start doing the setup and before you fly the unit. Again, is it a requirement? No, but it is very highly recommended. So. In order to update the firmware, you need to have a computer with running Windows and you need to have an internet connection and you need a, just a standard micro USB cord that you can plug from the computer down to your device. And uh, basically what you do is you visit the Spartan website. So you go to www.spartan-rc.com and the easiest way to get to where you want to go is you um, click on the Vortex VX1N link right here. Um, even if you don't have the Nano, even if you have the full unit, just click on the VX1N, it'll get you there. And then up above you'll see some links, um, overview, specifications, and so forth. At the end you'll see downloads, click on downloads, and then this will give you a list of downloads. Um, these are downloads, not only firmware downloads, but it's also your manuals and things like that. One download that is very important is the setup and tuning information right here. If you click on that, this is a complete guide about the Spartan Vortex. It shows you not only step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up, but it also shows you descriptions to every single possible parameter that you will find within the Vortex. So for example, if you click on receiver, then it shows you the different connections to receivers and stuff like that. And you know, as you get along and you finish your setup, if you have any doubts or any questions about certain parameters, you can click, for example, on rotor, and then you have all the parameters here. If you click on the plus sign, these are the advanced parameters. You click on any of these, and it gives you a description. This is very um, a user-friendly sort of manual that Angelos wrote. It works great on an iPhone or an Android device or even on an iPad or any kind of um, tablet. So definitely take a look at that. That's really important. I think everybody should look at it regardless of whether or not you watch this video in its entirety. So as far as firmware updates, well, first of all you need a data pot. No matter what you do, you do have to own a data pot. So when you buy your first Vortex, whether it is the, the Nano or the full unit, make sure you buy the one that comes with the data pot. If it's not available, buy the data pot separately, but you do need a da data pot to set it up as well as to tweak it and fine tune it later on. In the future, we're gonna have computer software available that you're gonna be able to use to fine tune your device, to set it up and everything else. But for now, we need to have a data pot. So make sure you have a data pot. And also the data pot needs to be updated. So when you do a firmware update, uh, in addition to updating your actual unit, whether it is the full unit that has the separate sensor or the nano, you also have to update the data pot. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. As you get to this page that I just showed you, um, you go down and you're gonna find a bunch of different files. So the first one here says data pot editor for Vortex M5 version 3.00. That's the latest version as of the making of this, this video. You might see a different version there, a newer version, that's fine. Go ahead and download that because that's going to be the file that you're gonna need to update your um, data pod. Then, if you have a Vortex Nano, a VX1N, you only need one file to update the Nano. And as you can see here, it says Vortex VX1N Flybarless System Firmware. That's the one you need. If you have the full unit, which is comprised of uh, a computer, or a, a control unit, and a sensor, then you need to download two different files because you need to update both devices separately. You need to download the Vortex VX1 flight computer firmware, and you need to uh, download the Vortex VX1 remote sensor. Um, again, you have to update both separately. So let's go ahead and start with the data pot first. How do you update this thing? Well, before you start anything, of course, make sure you have your computer, make sure you download all the files you need, make sure you have your uh, USB cord, 
your data pod, of course, and you're gonna need some kind of power source. I recommend uh, either an old LiPo, like I have this Pulse battery here, it's a two cell battery. You can use this great device here, it's a Scorpion, data, uh, Scorpion backup guard. I love this thing because it's got an on-off switch and it's small and it's perfect for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna use this Scorpion um, backup guard here. So have that handy because you're gonna need it. But for the first update, which is the data pot update, firmware update, you don't need any external power source. The data pot gets the power from the computer via the USB cable. So since I already downloaded all these files, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and I'm gonna go straight to my files right here. First file I'm gonna open is the VX1 underscore editor file. And that is the data pot update file. So I'm gonna double click on that, click run, unzip, okay? And that opens up my little program right here. Um, and as you can see, there's a button in the program. It's a very basic program. All it's doing is just uploading, it's just updating the firmware on the device. And as you can see here, it says start update and it is grayed out. Why? Because there's nothing connected. So to connect it, what we're gonna do is, there's a USB port on your data pot. You're gonna plug in the USB cord to that port, but you're gonna hold this button here, the S button on your data pot while, you're, while you plug in the USB cord. And as you do that, data pot will say USB, and as you heard, the computer will beep. And I can't make this stay like that. And then eventually, this button right here that says Start Update will change from being grayed out to an actual clickable button. You click on it, just like I did, and you see the update progress bar on your computer, and you also see it on your actual data pod. And that should complete the update for the data pod. Give it here another second or two, and there it goes, it's completed. As you can see here, it says update completed, successfully disconnect and power off. Nothing to power off, so we're just gonna disconnect, done. Now our data pod here is fully updated, so it's good to go. This is what we're gonna use to update the rest of our uh, devices. So in other words, you need this to update your nano as well as your full unit. So let's uh, say that you had a full unit, which is once again comprised of a computer or a control unit and the sensor. Well, you would have to update them both. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna update the sensor first. Always update the sensor first. And, and this is very critical. You do have to update that sensor because you can definitely have a, a big problem if you don't. So what you do is you unplug the um, cable from the data pot like so and then you plug in the um, sensor directly to your data pod in the exact same position, same port where you had your cable before. Make sure your polar polarity is correct. Once you have those connected, then the next step is you go back to your computer, you open the program that says VX1 underscore sensor, run, unzip, okay. Opens up the program. Again, the start update is grayed out because we have nothing plugged in now. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. So once again, you hold the S button on the data pot, you plug in your USB cord. I was connected. As you can see, now the sensor is blinking, meaning it's getting power. And this button on the computer that says start update will eventually become clickable. There it is. Click start. And this will update the sensor on your, vort full, on your full unit. Um, as you can see, the data pod does not have a progress bar at this time because you're not updating the data pod anymore, you're updating an external device. So you get your progress bar in the computer. As you can see, it's almost done, and it says update completed successfully, disconnect and power off. Nothing to uh, power off, so we disconnect, and we're done. So now, this sensor right here is completely updated. We're gonna set it to the side. Then we're gonna go ahead and update the main unit. To update the main unit, you have to, first of all, here's the main unit. You have to, first of all, again, like I said before, you need a power source. So, let's go ahead and look into this. We have our data pot, you have our main unit, we have our sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the same cable that we had on the data pot first, and we're gonna plug in the data pot into the 
computer control unit on the Vortex. And if you look at this, you'll see that there's a port here that says D-Pod. Obviously that is meant uh, to be used to, to, to connect the data pod. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the data pod to that port, like so. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to connect the um, sensor to the Spartan. And I'm gonna explain where things the connections and where you're supposed to plug things in but this is where the the sensor connects so we have the sensor connected to the unit the unit connected to the data pod and then we have to have power um, added to the unit because I have a Scorpion backup guard I'm gonna plug it into there already and leave it turned off for now though you don't want to add power to this yet so I'm gonna plug it into this port this is RX which is supposed to be a receiver port it can take power there we go. So what's important here is that you want to have everything already plugged into this unit and ready to go because when you start your computer software you have a timeout. So if you plug in the USB into the device and then you just walk away to go get a battery or something, the computer software will eventually time out and you will not be able to complete your firmware update. So have everything all ready to go before you proceed. Once you're ready to go, just execute that program, which is in this case VX1 flight comp file. Run it again, unzip, okay. It opens up and again, startup data is grayed out. Nothing's connected. So we're gonna connect our data pot. Once again, same story here. We're gonna hold the S button. And we're gonna plug it in. And the computer will tell us, power your Vortex VX1 now. So at that point, you add power. All I did now was I powered on my Scorpion backup guard, and now I wait until I see the start update coming alive. I click on it, and that starts the update. And that's completed. So now you say you see where it says update completed, successfully disconnect and power off. So we're gonna disconnect first, and then I'm gonna power off my Scorpion backup guard. So at this point we have the data pod updated, we have the main unit, the sensor and the main unit both updated. So if you had a main unit, you would be good to go from this point on. You would just plug it in, do all your connections, mount the sensor and start the setup. But I'm gonna show you how you update the Nano. Same procedure, nothing to it. We simply go ahead and open the software here in the computer for the Nano, which in this case is called VX1N underscore flabberless. Run, unzip, okay. It opens the program right here. Again, start update is grayed out because it's useless at this point. Then we take our Nano unit right here. Same thing. We plug in the data pod in the D pod uh, port of the Nano, just like that. Then you plug in your battery, but keep in mind I have a Scorpion backup guard, so I can turn it off and on. If you have a battery, you really don't want to do this until, until it tells you to power it on, because then you'd be giving it power. But that's my Scorpion backup guard. That's just great, because I can have it plugged in and ready to go, and I just needed like flick this switch right here, and it's good to go. So once all that's done, I go ahead and once again hold the S button here, plug my USB cord, shows USB and the computer tells me power on your Vortex VX1N now. I power it on right here and eventually the button becomes live and I can click on start update. Click on it and the update begins. This update actually takes a little bit of time on the VX1 as well as the VX1N. The sensor and the data pod are pretty quick. It just takes a few seconds, but when you do the full unit, especially on this particular update, it's version three. It's a completely new version. It's a radical change from the older version, so it takes a little bit of time. And as you can see here, the update is completed. It says disconnect and power off. So we're gonna disconnect, we're gonna power off, and we're done. So our Nano, as well as our data pod, as well as our full unit are all updated 
and all ready to go. Some people are skeptical when it comes to firmware updates because they think, oh, if I do the firmware update and my computer locks up or something happens, then my unit is bricked. Not with Spartan. Spartan does not change the bootloader, does not do anything until that file has been successfully sent to the unit. So you're absolutely 100% guaranteed that you're not going to brick your unit. If something fails, if your computer locks up, or if you lose power, or whatever happens, you unplug the unit accidentally or anything, um, don't panic. Just unplug things up, um, po you power off your unit, and start all over again, and I assure you that your Vortex will come back to life. So let's go next. I'm going to show you how to connect this thing. 